Now, you might think that since I'm making a part two of this, I must get recognized a whole lot, like I'm some sort of celebrity or something. No, 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 no. What actually happens is that I'm awkward, and I don't want to speak for everyone, but chances are you're awkward too. So when I do get recognized, we're both being awkward, together. And that stuff makes for great videos. Once you get to my level of YouTube fame, whenever I go out in public, I always have a thought in the back of my mind, I wonder if any of these people have seen me pour sprinkles over my shirtless body. I especially get worried when I see my target demographic in public. Little boys. This might be paranoia or anxiety, but I swear sometimes little boys will stare at me for an uncomfortable amount of time. And I'm just trying my best not to make eye contact. You know, I don't really have any defining physical characteristics that make me stand out. As of right now, little boys have to look at me and think, is that tall, white, dirty, blonde haired, early 20 year old beta male that one YouTuber I like, or am I just imagining things? It's funny I call myself the odd ones out when I'm part of like, no minorities. I mean, I might get nervous around little boys, but when I do get recognized, it's the highlight of my day. So I don't know what I'm worried about. I should just wear a shirt that says, hey, and the odd ones out. So one time I went to Walmart and I was buying a bunch of whoopee cushions for my April Fools video. And as I was walking down the aisle, I saw this little boy at the other end walking towards me and his face just lit up. And I thought, oh, this kid knows this is happening, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Are you James who? And then I walked off. I'm just kidding. I mean, I did say who, but I didn't walk away. I was just, I was just messing with the kid. It was probably really weird for that kid to see a YouTuber in Walmart buying nothing but whoopee cushions. So that was fun. This other time I was buying supplies for my 3 million sprinkle video and I ended up going to three different stores. Hey, do you guys have an inflatable pool? Yeah, what size do you need? Um, enough to fit 3 million sprinkles? What are you using it for? I need it for a thing. So after I finished my important business errands, I felt a little hungry, so I decided to buy some pre-made food. I work hard, dang it, I deserve it. And I decided to go eat at Zupa's. Zupa's is a pretty good restaurant. They have sandwiches and soup, and they give you a chocolate-covered strawberry with every order. I'm telling you this because I want them to sponsor me. I went up to the counter, and there was this employee that said, Hey man, what's up? And this is gonna be a bit of a tangent, but I just wanna say that I absolutely love that kind of employee. It's so much better than those fake fast food employees. Do you know the ones I'm talking about? Like every time I pull up into a Chick-fil-A drive-thru, there'll be an employee that will say, it's always a great day at Chick-fil-A. My name's Mackenzie, how may I serve you? And I just wanna say, Mackenzie, 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 Mackenzie. I came here yesterday and Brian said the exact same thing. I know your manager told you to say that. Look, neither of us want to be here, okay? No one says it's a great day at Chick-fil-A, okay? That's so dumb. So stop lying to me and give me the usual. Like, I would much rather have a fast food employee just say, what do you want? Okay, maybe not that rude, but you get the point. So now there's a random guy who works at Zupa's who doesn't even know I put him in a YouTube video, but I like his work ethic. Treat me like a person and not like a customer. Anyway, tangent over, I ordered some soup and a sandwich. Cool. I go up to the cash register. My soup is ready, but my sandwich wasn't. The girl said, did you get anything else or just soup? I said, no, I got a sandwich too. I paid for the food, but the sandwich still wasn't ready. I checked my phone, looked at Twitter. By now, the sandwich was done. The girl took the sandwich and the soup and a chocolate-covered strawberry and put it in a plastic box doggy bag thing. I was super hungry. I thought the transaction was done, so I grabbed the box and started sliding it towards me. Then she took out a plastic bag and said, oh, do you want it in a bag? And I thought, yeah. I do. So I slid the food back over, and as this girl was putting the food in the bag, she yelled, James! And I was not ready for that. Oh, uh, hey, I, I, mean, I mean, who? She said, did you come here because of my email? You sent an email? So that was pretty fun. All the other employees were like, wait, this guy's important? There's a high chance that this woman is watching this video right now, and I looked up her email, and her name is Scarlet. Isn't that a nice name? So Scarlet, if you're watching, can you tell your coworker I like his work ethic? Also, can you hook me up with free Zupas? I never really understood how people could get nervous talking to me. I'm just some 21 year old who likes M&Ms and drawing cartoons for the internet. I've always thought of myself as a pretty normal guy. At least I never understood that sort of nervousness until I met Carl Sagan 42. I recently got into this game called Mario Maker, which is a game where you can make your own Mario levels and share them with the world via the internet. I wanted to find some Mario Maker Let's Players that were one, good at the game, and two, weren't screaming every 10 seconds, which is actually a lot harder to find than you might think. But I went searching and I found these three Let's Players who mostly play Mario Maker and 
they're all right at the game. I mean, they're only a little better than me. If one of my videos gets delayed, you could probably thank these three because I'm watching their videos instead of working. Also, this is gonna sound weird, but every morning after I wake up at 12, I pour myself a bowl of cereal and I watch one of their videos. So I start my day off with my Mario Maker boys. Anyway, one of the Let's Players, Carl Sagan 42, Mushroom. was going to Phoenix Comic Con, which was great because I was also going to Phoenix Comic Con. I didn't have a panel or anything, I just went with Jaden and her friends and we just walked around. Comic-Con was a lot of fun. I met up with a lot of people. I even got recognized at Subway. One of the workers knew me. There is this room where you could play video games, and I went up to this one kid playing Super Smash Brothers, and I said, all right, dude, let's do this. And he said, I feel like I know you from somewhere. Huh, okay. And then I totally wiped the floor with him with Kirby, and he was like 12 years old. So I had a fun time at the con, but I also wanted to meet Carl. Now, Carl wasn't going to the con because of his Mario Maker skills, but rather he was going because he's actually a scientist who studies vaccines and plants, and he was going to talk about that. So on Friday, after doing some stalking on Twitter, I found out that he had a panel at 9 p.m. Yes! Leading up to the panel, I realized that I was getting my information off a tweet and not from the official Comic-Con handbook, so I didn't even know if I was going to the correct panel. When 9pm rolled around, I walked into the room Carl said he was having his panel, I saw a group of five people sitting on a stage, but I didn't see Carl. <sighs> guess he's not here. Oh wait, he is here! He's just the only person in cosplay! That's the guy I like! The one in the wig! As I listened to his panel, I kept telling myself that Carl was just a normal person like me, he plays Mario, I make cartoons, I shouldn't be nervous to talk to him, why am I like this? The panel was great, everyone enjoyed it except for this one woman who I think was anti-vaccine. Once it was done, the panelists stayed around for a couple of minutes and I went up to Carl and I said, Hey, I really like your Mario Maker streams. And since he talked about vaccines, I showed him this comic I made back in 2014, which I will read now. Hey folks, are you tired of hearing this? Can you believe all the horrible things doctors put in vaccines? There's no way I'm vaccinating my child. We'll suffer no longer with the anti-anti-vaccine. The anti-anti-vaccine will stop anyone from thinking vaccines are harmful or cause autism. And then he injects the anti-anti-vaccine into the person and then he flops over. Is he okay? No, he's dead. Vaccinate your relatives today. It's dark, yes, but Carl liked it, and he even said that AAV is a name of a virus, so vaccine is actually a virus. Well, actually, vaccines are viruses, so. The anti-vaccine lady was behind me, and I think she wanted to talk to Carl, so I said, okay, I love you, bye, and I left Carl to deal with her. Some of you might be wondering why I didn't say, oh, also, Carl, by the way, I have three million subscribers on YouTube. Well, because I think that's rude. And I didn't want to flex too hard. I mean, if he did ask about my sub count, I totally would have told him, but I don't know, I just didn't want to brag. I tell you this story because I understand that people might get anxiety talking to someone they look up to. And just because I have more subs than someone doesn't mean I won't get nervous talking to them. Senpais can have senpais too. I wonder who Carl's senpai is. Then two days later, I tweeted out to him and he followed me back and we're BFFs now. Now guys, don't embarrass me in front of Carl, okay? Don't just go to his channel and comment, Who's here because of the odd ones out? Because no one cares, all right? If you have to comment, comment, Wow, great video, Carl. You're an awesome person when it comes to Mario. You just jumped right into my heart. And also, you can check out the other two that I mentioned. They're, they're pretty good, too. So, in conclusion, is it cool to be recognized? Yeah. Will I ever get tired of it? Who knows?